let's talk a little about what's been sure. going on here yeah. in Davos mm -hmm. this week. It feels like a tale uh, of two cities. I know it's a, sort of a bit of a cliche, but most people seem to say that their business is going well. They're actually expecting earnings to be okay. Right. And yet then there are these sort of dire warnings about a recession mm -hmm. that is looming right. on top of it. Right. It, it, Who's it, right? Yeah, uh, honestly, there's, there's a couple dynamics, I think, that are, are at play. You know, the first, and we've been talking about this, is like, first, let's not talk ourselves into a recession. You know, there's a dynamic where there's still massive productivity being introduced to, and frankly, almost every industry. And a lot of it's driven by technology. And I like to say that software is probably one of the, the, the best indicators of and, and, and drivers of that productivity. So you're seeing a massive upswing in what I'll call productivity and opportunity to expand the businesses leveraging technology. I'm not sure that all the economists actually can factor all of that into a lot of their figures and their numbers. And I think that dynamic is, is still missed. You know, when we first came here a few days ago, it was, you know, a feeling of pessimism. Of course, we have a government that shut down. We have, you know, a Brexit that may or may not happen. And we have a trade war that has been causing a bunch of tensions. But as you now talk to heads of state and talk to various, you know, sovereign wealth fund leaders as well as business managers, we're all figuring out that actually business is actually moving forward and business leaders are actually thinking about how they drive that productivity, frankly, into their, into their, into their teams and into the communities in which they operate. And that created a, I'll call it a well of optimism over the last few days here that we didn't have the first couple of days. Maybe, maybe we're just sort of dealing with the hangover of December and what happened in the markets. I but think so. Yeah. Let me ask you, though, you mm -hmm. did mention uh, the government shutdown. Before we came into this yeah. uh, segment, uh, they showed a clip of uh, the conversation we had with Wilbur Ross yesterday that mm -hmm. really did go viral in many <laughs> right. ways in terms of the commentary from the administration right. uh, and what it meant both in terms of thinking about it economically but really thinking about it on a personal level. How are you looking at right. the shutdown yeah. yourself and for your own business? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. There's a, there's a couple dynamics. One of the ones that I've been focused on with various you know, business leaders here, what are we doing about it? You know, and some are saying, listen, we're going to offer opportunity and offering loans, for instance, you know, uh, if you look at uh, what, what, what they're doing in PayPal and right. what Dan's doing. I mean, it's phenomenal saying, okay, listen, let's help, uh, help the constituents in, that that we deal with. You know, we at Vista have been right. helping, for instance, air, air traffic controllers in Austin and ensuring that they have, you know, meals and opportunity to, you know, continue to move their families forward. And the dynamic, I think, is business leaders are stepping in and making sure that the communities in which they operate in are, are actually, you know, somewhat cared for in this dynamic. But the fact is the government needs to get back to work. We need the government for the, you know, right. various inspection of our food and, you know, drugs and all those sort of things to help us actually move the society forward. Um, I'll ask you the same question sure. I actually asked, asked uh, Secretary Ross yesterday, which is Alex Karp came on our program from Palantir, mm -hmm. huge government contractor. Right. And he said that he believed the government shutdown was terrible for the brand of America. He said as he walked around yeah, here yeah. that it was particularly damaging. Yeah. True or true or not true, and I should tell you the, yeah. the answer that Wilbur Ross gave, yeah. which I don't think the public liked, was <laughs> hyperbole. Right. No, it's true. I think you know people have in here still look to America as really the the, the the bellwether, the leader of how society should be structured, should be governed, uh, and and frankly, if you if you you know shut down that infrastructure and it, it disables many of us to actually conduct business right. and then people look at that and say well well why is that being ineffective what what are you actually fighting over and what's the dynamic there and right. everyone is ready for america to get get back to work and kind of move forward and lead and not only the business leadership but the moral leadership of, of this of this this planet uh, you sell a lot of your enterprise software product all over the world we do yes what are you seeing? Tell, tell us what you think is going to be coming out of Asia, out of China, yeah. Europe. Sort of, sort of, sort of take, us, uh, take, take us on a little trip. Yeah, it's a long, long conversation. The fact of the matter is this. We now sell in over 175 countries. Um, we operate, in essence, over you know, 60 portfolio companies uh, that, that, in essence, are in over 62 different industries. The dynamic is as follows. People, companies, our, our, our customers are realizing, again, the value that enterprise software brings to managing their right. businesses, expanding their opportunities, making more efficient uh, engagement with their own customers. We're seeing a continued upswing in the consumption of software. And the good news about that is, you know, as we're seeing that, we're seeing companies being more productive and, and actually driving down. Do you see a slowing, that. for example, uh, out of China? I no, mean, look, I, I, was with, I was with the CEO of a major Chinese company yesterday yeah. who must use the word ugly 
and the word economy yeah. in the same sentence five times in a row. I, I have to say, you know, we talk about. It wasn't even talking about U.S. trade but, tensions. But, you know, when you think about growing at 40 plus percent, while well, talking about, you know, in terms of, you know, software growth, does it go down to 32 percent in China? Maybe. You see what I mean? It isn't like sluggish. Overall, they're saying the economic growth in China is going to be, you know, in the, in the high sixes, mid to high sixes. Well, I mean, that's still actually pretty decent. And you look at India, it's still growing at over 7 percent. You look at what's happening in Latin America with Brazil and Colombia, two new presidents coming in saying they're pro-business, you know, anti-corruption. Right. And, and hopefully if all that happens, you're going to see again, you know, the consumption of productive tools that are going to be introduced into all the different industries in, in those countries. When you look at the economic cycle, when we're, and we've asked this question of, of every private equity titan, as yeah. we've called you uh, this week, are we in, in, in the planting or harvesting period. Are, are we, at, are we at, the, at the end of the cycle? I, I don't think so. I think we're still in the middle of it. Look, middle. Yeah, in the middle. I, By the way, Jim know. Coulter yeah. said this is like a fraternity party. <laughs> and if last year was 2 a.m. and they just yeah. brought in some, you know, a right. new keg to get right. things started with, with, with uh, some fiscal help. Yeah. Now it's like 4 a.m. <laughs> he said it gets a little crazy after 4 a.m. I, I, I don't know the fraternity he was in, but, you know, the one I'm in, uh, we're, we're actually focused on continuing to drive growth and earnings and productivity. Again, there is still so much inefficiency uh, that can be taken out of underlying industries that technology brings. And then you start to introduce, I'll call it this, the, the next generation of catalysts, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning, the, you know, distributed ledger technologies. Those create, again, another accelerant to this efficiency. So those efficiencies aren't really, what I'll say, being captured or realized in a lot of the economic figures. And, you know, we have a chance, we have over 800,000 customers. And when I look at how we're performing in those businesses and serving those customers, those customers are not slowing down their consumption of the software. They are realizing the dynamic that, that our right. software brings to their underlying business. a different question. Uh, sure. The opening panel of Davos this right. year mm -hmm. I hosted was around the idea of market concentration mm -hmm. and the idea actually that tech companies, that there's not enough competition in the tech space because of Amazon, because of mm. Google, because of Facebook, because, because of, the, of the biggest players. Yeah, Ginny Rometty, we talked yeah, about it. She right. just bought Red Hat, right, yeah. it's a business I know that you probably right. focus on a little yeah. bit. Do you think there's competition in the tech business? I, I'll tell you, here's the dynamic that's been interesting. There's been a massive distribution of computing power. Okay, and as a result of that, and Amazon and others have distributed that computing power. Computing power went from a thousand dollars, you know, an hour to now thirty bucks a month. And as a result of that, you now have massive innovation that's occurring. You may not see it because most of those companies are private. So you think all this, the hand, hand ring Look, little hand, are, is there, too much? No, there's a few big companies that actually, they were first movers. They took yeah. advantage of the opportunity. They have massive distribution or distribution of their products and services, but the innovation cycles are accelerating. There are over 100,000 enterprise software right. companies. 98.9% of them are private. You don't see them or feel them. We see right. them. That's the world we live in. And so in many of those spaces, there's an adequate competition, and that okay. competition will ultimately you know, right. re, you know, end up in a place where we have consolidation in those industries where you have fewer winners. Before I let you go, yeah. uh, when you walked in here, you said you were crying because of yeah. uh, what you just saw. Right. Tell, tell the audience what, you, what you just did and what you just saw well, before we send it back so to you. I, I have the great pleasure of, of supporting an organization called the Sphinx Organization. They're based out of Detroit. And for tw over 20 years, 22 years, uh, there's Aaron and Afa Dworkin who have, who have found, been founders and stewards of this, this organization. They get to over 10,000 inner city kids a year in helping them bring classical music from their hearts and their souls to people. They get to over 2 million people a year. And so we brought them for the first time here for the closing ceremony. Uh, I'll tell you, it wasn't a dry eye in the house. They were absolutely spectacular. And there's a way to end a conference like this with hope and optimism through our young people. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Thank you for that hope and optimism. Uh, Robert Andrew. F. Smith, thank Pleasure. you. We hope to see you back in New York. We will, see you at Cornell. Yeah.